What's the best way of creating a pre-save for Spotify? A UPC code, an ISRC code, a URL or a URI? These actually make a big difference on what you're getting out of your pre-save. So let me show you in this video. Hey, it's Sean here at Hyped It. And in this video, I wanna show you how to set up a Spotify pre-save for your music that gets you the best results. And it all starts here where you create it. So let's say you have a release coming up, it's just a couple days or a couple weeks until your music comes out and you're planning to run a pre-save campaign for that track. And now you're actually setting up your pre-save page or in Hyped It, we also call it a pre-release smart link because that's really what it is. I'm gonna show you this for Hyped It, but it's essentially the same process, whatever software you use. So you come to this page here and the first question that you're being asked is what is the source? You have to identify the music that you want fans to pre-save. And the typical options you have is you can provide a URL, a URI, a UPC code, which stands for Universal Product Code, or an ISRC code, which stands for International Standard Recording Code. But what do you use? And does it even make a difference? Well, spoiler alert, it makes a huge difference for your results, and that's what I wanna show you in this video. And to start, let's hop over into my distributor page, because chances are the UPC and the RSRC codes are something that you get readily from your distributor. You can also use a URL or a URI, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but typically you have to request those from your distributor versus UPC and ISRC codes being readily available. So I use Ingrooves as my distributor, and this is one of my releases over here. And what you can see is that this is a release that has two tracks on it. You have at the release level, sort of the album level, this is Take Me Down by John Gold. And then there are two tracks on here, a radio version and an extended version. And what you'll notice relative to the UPC and IRCC codes is that the UPC code exists at the release level. You see the UPC code here. This is basically the album level. Consider this an album with two tracks. And the album has a UPC. The album does not have any ISRC codes. Albums only have UPC codes. And it doesn't really matter whether what we call album is a release that just has a single track on it and you would ordinarily call it sort of a single, right? But every piece of music you put out through distributor has a release level, which is sort of the container, and then it has the tracks that are inside of that container, which are down here. So release level, album level, you get a UPC code, and then at the track level, you get ISRC codes. So whenever you have an ISRC code and you use that to create a pre-save, it means you create the pre-save for a specific track if you use a UPC code to create a pre-save, it means you create a pre-save for an album or for the release itself. Now you might be wondering, John, that's all nice and well, but what does it mean? Like, why do I care? What's the difference? In order to show you the difference, let's hop over into Spotify. Now we're looking at the same release in Spotify. It's this release called Take Me Down. And again, it has two tracks on it here. And now I wanna show you what happens when a fan saves the track as opposed to the release, because that is really important. So if a fan likes one of your tracks or saves one of your tracks, it's basically what they're doing is they're hitting this little heart icon. And obviously if you use a pre-save page, then that happens automatically on release day after they pre-saved your track. It just happens in the background without them actually clicking the button, but it's the same process, whether a fan manually saves the track here or they pre-save it through a dedicated pre-save page, the process or the end result are exactly the same, right? So if you save or pre-save a track, that track goes into the fans liked songs playlist. So I just saved Take Me Down Extended Mix. And if I go to Liked Songs, I now see Take Me Down Extended Mix saved one minute ago at the top of this list. Now that is what most artists have in mind when they wanna get pre-saves. They want their music to appear in their fans liked songs playlist. Cause obviously this is a playlist of songs that the fan actively liked and they're very likely to come to this playlist 
and stream music of this playlist. So as there's a fair chance that you're picking up streams if your music is included in the liked songs playlist. But now let me take this off again here. I'm gonna unsave this track. I'm gonna remove it from liked songs. And let me go back. And this time we're gonna like the release itself. So we're gonna save the release to the library instead of one of the tracks. So let me hit the little uh, hard icon here. And again, it says save to library. Now, if you go to liked songs, in this case, it's not here, right? You may have thought, well, maybe both of these tracks on the release are ending up in the liked songs playlist, but that's not how it works. None of the songs was added to my liked songs playlist. I'll show you where it is instead. Because where it went is in the library under albums, you have the Take Me Down album now. Again, for Spotify, every release, no matter how many tracks are on there, is an album. So when we saved this at the release level, it added it to the albums folder in the fans library. So here's what this means. And let me go back there real quick. It means if you use a UPC code in your smart link or in your pre-save, then fans automatically save the product, the release. And it means that your release goes into the fans library into the album folder. If you use an ISRC code, that means fans save a particular track and that track ends up in the liked songs playlist. Or said differently, you control where fans save your music. If you want your music to appear in your fans liked songs playlist, which in most cases I'd recommend because that's what fans are most likely to stream and that's where you're most likely to get your music heard over and over again by a fan, then make sure you use an ISRC code when you set up your pre-save. If you, let's say you really do have an album and it's really important for you that fans are not just saving one or two tracks of that album, but you want the album itself to go into your fans library, into the album folder, then use a UPC code for your pre-save so you get your album saved. But let me show you one more difference that all this makes and this is how Spotify for Artists reports these different statistics. So if I go to my music section in Spotify for Artists, you see every release here and the breakdown of the tracks on that particular release. And in the first column, you see the number of streams, the number of listeners, the number of views, and the number of saves. And then you have the release date. So let me scroll down to take me down again. Just wanna make sure I'm looking at the same release. Okay, here it is. You see the release level, and then you see the two tracks included. Now this is really important. This is the column with the saves. And you see that Spotify for Artists reports the track saves. You can see Take Me Down, the extended mix has been saved a little over 10,000 times by fans. The radio mix has been saved a little bit over 5,000 times by fans. But the release level does not show any safe information here, right? It's the same for every release. You can scroll up or scroll down. You can see the same on your end. Spotify for Artists does not report saves at the release level. And this is something I come across every once in a while because I work with and I talk to other musicians and they set up a pre-save campaign and they do see in the campaign stats that they maybe got, you know, a couple of hundreds of pre-saves and then they're wondering why none of those pre-saves show up in Spotify for artists. And then most of the time, it turns out that they used a UPC code or a URL or URI for the release. And then all you end up is basically a, a blank because Spotify for artists just doesn't report it. So my key takeaway here is that unless you're promoting an album and you think your fans will listen to saved albums more than they will listen to liked tracks on their liked tracks playlist, my recommendation is always use an ISRC code to set up your pre-saves. And the same applies even if you want to use a URL or URI, make sure it's the URL or URI to the track itself and not the URL or URI for the album. Track saves is something that you can track in Spotify for artists and it does put your music into your fans liked tracks playlist. I hope this sets you up for success with your next pre-save 
And if you need more help growing your streams, listeners, fans, and pre-saves on Spotify, then check out the link that's on or around this video here. It's gonna take you to the Spotify Growth Engine, which is an online coaching program where I show you click by click how to set up an automatic growth machine for your music on Spotify that gets you more streams, more listeners, more fans, and more pre-saves instantly. Just click the link below. I hope to meet you on the inside, and I can't wait to see you in another video. Cheers.